the sun sitting fast Just like they say nothing good ever lasts Go on now and kiss it goodbye But hold on to your love because your heart's bound to die Go on now and say goodbye to our town, to our town Can't you see the sun sitting down on our town, on our town Good night. Now I sit on the porch, watch lightning bugs fly I can't see too good, I got tears in my eyes I'm leaving tomorrow, but I don't wanna go I love you, my town, you'll always live in my soul And you know the sun's sitting fast and Just like you say, nothing good ever lasts Go on now and kiss it goodbye But hold on to your love because your heart's bound to die I Go on now and say goodbye to our town, to our town can't you see the sun sitting down on our town, on our town? Good night. Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include Lions and Lioness Annual Awards Night, Aki Tournament. Family Literacy Day at the Public Library. These stories plus the community events, the BBS Playbill, After Act, and more coming up after this. There's puffins and petrels, kittiwakes and gulls, guillemots, merlins and murres, owls and osprey, hawks and razorbills and you can see where the eagles have landed on saturday january the 22nd the Brugia lions and lioness held their annual awards night the banquet began at 8 p.m with everyone singing o canada and the lions invocation next lion tony bungie presented king lion max billard with a plaque in memory of all deceased line members. Then a moment of silence was held in their memory. A series of toasts followed. A toast to the Queen, Lions International, the Ladies, and the Lions Toast. Lioness Marjorie Ann said grace over the meal. King Lion Max was MC for the evening. He did the introductions of the id table. Mayor Ann extended greetings on behalf of the town. Guest speaker for the evening was Mr. George Childs. Mr. Childs entertained everyone with his many jokes and stories. Next it was time for past King Lion Tony to present the year in report. Past Lioness President Patricia Sims presented the Lioness year in report. The presentations of awards were next. Past King Lion Tony presented Norman Strickland with a jacket for his role as secretary and Clayton Mead for being treasurer. T-shirts were presented to Frank Han, Lion Tamer, Oliver Ingram, Tail Twister, Rod Kosser, and Gord Ingram for serving as board of director members. Service lapel pins were awarded to members of the Lions Club who served for three, ten, 15, 20, 25, and 30 years. Lion Jim Marsden was presented with a plaque for his dedication in getting the seniors bus in Burgio. Past King Lion Tony was given a plaque for his service and dedication as King Lion for 2004. Next was the presentations of the Lion of the Year Award. This year, past King Lion Tony presented this award to Norman Strickland. Patricia Sims and Marge Ann gave out the Lioness Awards. Two year service pins went to Regina Ann. Third year pins went, was awarded to Paulette Ann, Yvonne Lushman, Claudette Benite, and Una Han. Dolores Green received her fifth year service pin. For 15 years of service, Ann Brown, Audrey Dolman, and Marlene Vatcher 
also got a lapel pin. Grace Abbott at 20 years of service. For her 25 years of service, Salvia Kosser was presented with a jacket and a lapel pin. Treasurer Grace Abbott, Tamer Ann Brown, and Twister Paulette Ann, Secretary Marge Ann, and Lioness Past President Patricia were presented with writing pins for their service. Lioness members who didn't get years of service lapel pins were presented writing pins for perfect attendance. Ariette Strickland was presented with her life membership to the Lioness Club as well as a lapel pin. The Lions, Lioness, and guests showed their approval for this gesture by giving Ariette a standing ovation. Lion Max Pink presented this year Dart Awards. The prizes consisted of sweaters, t-shirts, and caps. After the presentations, King Lion Max extended his congratulations to all received awards and wished everyone an enjoyable evening. Lioness President Doris Pink extended her greetings as well. Doris went on to say that if you are looking for a group to join that offers fun and fellowship while doing service projects for the community, then the Lioness is an organization for you. The banquet concluded with return thanks by Lioness Marge Ann and singing of Old to Newfoundland. A dance followed with music by A and A. On Sunday, January the 23rd, there was a hockey tournament scheduled for the Rec Center. This tournament was supposed to be the first to be held at the new Rec Center. The teams will be from Burgio and Ramia. However, due to the impending winter storm, the Ramu team decided not to come. The Burgio teams went ahead with the game anyway. Another tournament is being planned for February the 12th and 13th. This will be a minor hockey t tournament with teams from St. George's. <laughs> On Thursday of this week, the Family Resource Center and the Public Library held a Family Literacy Day. 29 children and their parents or guardians attended the Literacy Day. Fam Family Literacy Day was created by the ABC Canada Literacy Foundation in 1999 to help promote the importance of reading and learning together as a family. This day is celebrated each year on January the 27th. This event in our community was organized and sponsored by the Burgio Public Library and the Family Resource Center. As the children came in to the library, Resource Center workers Lacey Ingram and Cheryl Miles gave out tattoos and helped the children to put them on. Firefighter Calvin Eyre was dressed in his firefighting equipment while Fire Chief Glenn Ann read a story to the children and their parents called The Firefighter. Constable Scott Goss read a Clifford story, and Vice Principal of Burgio Academy, Ruth Tucker, read a story called No David, and Martha Counts Her Kittens. While the stories were being read, the parents did out a Literacy Day questionnaire for a chance to win a Literacy Day t-shirt. Michelle Mercer and the two resource workers did a puppet show for the children about the three belly goats gruff. Next up, the children took part in a coloring contest for a chance to win a prize. While most of the children were coloring, 
Mrs. Tucker was helping the four-year-olds act out the three belly goats gruff. The children had a great time doing this. There was also a craft available for the children to do if they wanted to. However, most of them decided to take it home. As the children and their parents and guardians enjoyed the lunch that was provided, Michelle did the prize draws. The winner of the t-shirt was Nancy Billard. The toque was run, won by Ethan Benite, who, as you can see, was taking a nap and could care less. There were a number of prize draws for the coloring contest. Books were won by Sarah Standing, Marissa Warren, Dakita Pink, Chandler Porter, Jared Mead, and Melissa Compton won a book that was autographed by the author. Everyone who attended Liter Family Literacy Day went home with a pencil, a sticker, postcard, and a bookmark. Organizers were very pleased with the turnout at this Family Literacy Day and considered it a great success. Stay tuned for more of this Week in Review coming up after this. There's houses of aqua, yellow and blue, lime, rose, pink and green, as proud to show their true colors as the folks you meet every turn. So take her in your arms and tell her that you love her and meet the world's most friendly folk. We'll sweep you off your feet with a Caligrew Soiree. While we were at Bridge Academy on Thursday of this week, Mr. Vivian invited us to take a look at the Art 2200 class grid drawings. This is a part of Art 2200 requirements. Students are required to choose a picture and to draw it onto a grid. They also use light and dark shading on their drawings. They're very beautiful. We believe each student should get a high grade for their efforts. Ralph Porter also dropped by on Friday of this week to give us some information about the upcoming ground search and rescue Skidoo Run. We have with us in our studio today Ralph Porter and Ralph is the president with the uh, local ground search and rescue. Welcome Ralph. Thank you. I understand you have some information uh, about your upcoming snowmobile ride. Uh, yes, we uh, this year um, we will be going on a ride as we did in the past four years and the only difference being this year, uh, we are considering, uh, because we've been asked by the people of Grand Boot if we were interested in staying overnight. And, uh, yeah, that will be the difference, but other than okay. that, the ride will be basically the same. Obviously. Um, so uh, what date now have you have in mind for your ride? 
Well, depending on the weather, that's going to be either late February okay. or early March. Early March, okay. E registration fee? Uh, registration, same as last year, uh, $15 per person. Uh, or you can pick up a sponsor sheet and uh, click sponsors around town for family and friends or whoever, equal to the 15 or more if you're uh, interested in trying to win a prize, okay. which we'll be having available as well. And you have your prizes based on the most money raised, the second? Most money raised, we'll get the first prize, and yep. then we'll come down the second and then the third. Yeah, okay. Um, last year, I believe, didn't you have a whole uh, bunch of prizes to give away at a random draw? We did. Did it work? We yeah. did. The, uh, the business has been quite uh, generous, for us to be quite truthfully, over the years, and uh, we've uh, been able to give away uh, multiple prizes, I guess, to, to individuals. Some people have gone off with three and four and five prizes and so on and so forth, and uh, that's been good and it's created an interest, and uh, we like that. Okay. Um, last year, I believe you, you just went with a single rider on the Skidoos? No, we, we permitted double up last year. That was the first year. Okay, so will you be uh, We never had too many that, that took advantage of that last year, but uh, we feel right now we've got the members, we've got the committee, and we got the, you know, we, we can accommodate people in that respect. If we run into a bit of problem, we can we can take care of it. That's not that's not a problem. If we're going to Grand Brewitt. Okay, so uh, this year you said the you're going to the same place, which is Grand Brewitt, and the over only difference is overnight stay. Well, that would depend upon the interest. Okay. 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 Now that's not to say that we're going to rule out just going up and coming back in the same day. If enough interest is shown for us to go up and stay overnight, then we'll do that. The thing about that is the United Church Women, the UCW of Grand Road, have asked us if we were interested in staying overnight or the, the people were interested in staying overnight. And if so, uh, what will happen is uh, they'll bill it out to people, provided we don't have uh, too many riders. But uh, if we got somewhere in the vicinity, 30 or 35 riders, then the, the accommodations will be taken care of. They've also uh, advised us that uh, they'll be providing meals which is going to be at a minimum cost uh, to the rider. I think uh, lunch is around five, supper is five. There's a potluck supper on the evening that we get there. That's if we're going to stay. And the following day, breakfast at $3. And uh, if we don't leave till after lunch, one or two, they'll provide lunch at the same kind of like five bucks per person, right? Okay. Well, so it was certainly an interesting and uh, intriguing. Very, uh, very so, very yeah. much so. Yes. Um, what does, is this one of the Grand Search and Rescue's major fundraisers for it the is, year? It uh, is. The Snowbill Ride, Santa Sea Festival. Okay. We usually as one or two other fundraisers, uh, usually about four per year. That's what we, we participate in. Uh, we've already done one. We had a fundraiser, uh, sold tickets on, uh, I think it was 12 dozen beer. Okay. So uh, with this fundraiser, obviously it gives you, uh, your organization, the ability to uh, buy more equipment or invest in <clears throat> well, the, the search money, and rescue stuff. That's definitely. The money goes back into to equipment, uh, either uh, upgrades or replacement of equipment. And there's always new equipment coming on, on stream. And uh, we like to be, be as prepared as the, the next team, so to speak. And that's where the money goes. Okay. Uh, We've got a great building there now. And uh, we just like to be able to utilize it the way that it's supposed to be. OK. Um, if anyone is interested in your Skidoo run, do you have your sponsor sheets available sponsor now? Sponsor sheets are available. They're uh, available from any of the uh, committee members, and this year we've got eight members on the committee. And uh, I don't want to miss anybody here, but uh, Jim Domney and Hearts Green, Danny Buffett, Michael Ball, uh, Gary Durnford, myself, and uh, Junior Ingram's there, Craig Ricketts. Okay. I think they'll give me a rough time if I missed either one of them. Yeah. But, uh, by and large, the other sponsor sheets are available. Okay. Um, anybody's phone number you're willing to get out just in case they wanted uh, more information about the stay or um, going to Grand Britain if they have to? Do they have to uh, make arrangements for their own billets or will you? No. The, uh, if they're interested in going, they can just touch base with either one of those committee members or they can get in touch with me anyway and uh, let me know and I'll just record those names. Uh, and the interest, whether they want to stay overnight or whether they just want to make a day okay. trip. And okay. uh, we'll go with the majority. Okay. If majority says we like to stay overnight, we'll go with the majority, or we'll just do it like we've always done, day by day. Okay. Go and come. Yeah. But um, that's, that's basically about the, the only difference. But okay. if we don't know the interest, then we're not going to be able to work with, the, with Grand Brewitt and let them know just what's what. Okay. You know, and they got to be prepared. So the sooner people can let us know, 
the sooner we can let them know, and then and we can make the arrangements accordingly. Okay, so right now this is just in the uh, initial it's, planning it's stages. It's in the planning stages. Okay. We talked about it last year when we were up there. Okay. So uh, now we're snow is on the go, and we're talking about Snowmobile Roy, so this is when we're getting this thing going. All right. Um, did we cover everything? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Or? Uh, no, the only thing about this, uh, people might wonder why we're doing this. Uh, the Grand Brewer, the community of Grand Brewer, they have a winter carnival every winter as well. Even though they may be a small community, they still have their winter activity. And they thought it would be great if the snowmobile ride and the uh, winter carnival could be held together. Ah. All right, and yeah. uh, would uh, add to their activities and uh, with numbers of people. Uh, Normally during their winter carnivals, they have a few games up there, and there's only a couple of kids, I think, in school. But they do have their, their darts, their, their dance, or their card games, or whatever. So by taking 30, or hopefully probably more, people in, a, you know, is going to add to that. And on the night uh, if we stay up, that's what it's going to be. There'll be cards available, darts available, and okay. activities accordingly. I'm not exactly sure just what activities, but... They're going to plan that. So it's that going end. to be an added attraction oh, of a winter so. carnival in a small community. Oh yes, much so. They uh -huh. have the snowshoe races and uh, things like that as well. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, it's going yeah. to be great. Uh, so it would be really like almost two fundraisers right together. It would be. Yeah, the UCW yeah. will be able to, uh, uh, you know, raise some uh, funds. Raise some from funds, their church, and yeah. uh, we'll enjoy their uh, their hospitality and uh, and it's putting a little bit back into the community. Wow. They've been good to us over the years. Like I said, we've been going up there now since. I don't know, I think the Lions started way back when. Yeah. And we've tried to continue that, so it's uh, it's payback time. Yeah. You know, wow. which would be great. Okay. Well, thanks very much for dropping me in. Not a problem. Anything else that we can do to help you promote this, just let us know. All right. Thank you. You're thank you kindly very much. welcome. Stay with us. We're off the rack, the community events, and the BBS Playbill, all after this. Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of when Mrs. Tucker's grade 4 or 5 class tells us why Burgio needs an arena. All of these children have since graduated and moved on. Let's look back to June 1995. Stephen Keynes, I'm not so Burgio arena because then we could have tournaments and there's still going to St. George's. Hi, my name is Bella Courtney. I can't wait to the Bridge Arena gets built because we could have hockey lessons in the summertime. Then coaches could come out and give us gels. It will be cool. My name is Jerry Beller. I want Arena because bands could come out and play. It would be fun to have Buddy Watson's name to come out and play. You won't have to pay so much because you won't have to go to different places to see concerts. Hi, my name is Beth Ann Ingram. I would like an arena because then we could have the bicycle rodeo up there. We won't have to worry about the weather because this year they couldn't give out the certificates because it rained. If we had an arena, we won't get wet and cold during the bicycle rodeo. My name is Dana Pink. I can't wait to get an arena in Virgil because then we would be able to have video dances. At a video dance, you would have a big screen. It would look like a band coming to Virgil. It would be different and really fun. Hi, my name is Julia. I can't wait to get an arena in Bergio because I want to figure skate. We could have lessons and it would be fun. I'd love to be able to skate around in a little tutu and in the arena it wouldn't be too cold. Hello, my name is Robbie Corn and I hope we get in an arena because when we didn't, did not have an arena, the fans were cold when they watched the hockey game. When we get in an arena, the fans won't be cold. They will be just right. Maybe more fans will come. My name is Freeman Han. I think we need an arena because we don't get much ice time right now, and if we had an arena, we wouldn't have to worry about the rain. Hi, my name is Glenn Tucker. 
I want Bertie to get an arena because then the circus could come. A lot of people would like to see a circus. Imagine being able to see elephants and tigers without traveling. Uh, my name is Kimberly Green, and I can't wait for the arena to be built because for me it's a summer fair. We won't worry about the weather. We can play games without canceling the summer fair. Hi, my name is Gavin Green, and I want an arena because then we might have wrestling in the summer. We can probably have some of our favorite wrestlers like Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, and The Undertaker. I'm sure everyone in Virgil would like to watch Think and Join and Take Team Wrestling. Hi, my name is Trista Blair. I'd like to have an arena in Virgil so we can have dance and listen there. Good day. My name is Jennifer Merckx. I know I'll be glad to get an arena in Virgil, but older people will be glad too. They'll be able to play bingo instead of in the community center or on the rink. They'll be more comfortable and it won't be so warm. The arena will be for everyone. It's Chris Oregon and I'll be happy when we get an arena because the ice will be better and safer and the ice should freeze faster and the rain won't ruin the ice. I would like to have an arena because I, people can go skating and play hockey and in the summer they can go roller skating. Okay. Hello, my name is Matthew Wolves. I would like an arena because we could play basketball, volleyball, soccer, and other games. We might even learn karate if we get an arena. Hi, my name is Matthew Melbourne. I will be glad when we get our arena because we will have more room for flea markets. It will be better because we will have more tables and you will be able to see things better. Hi, my name is Matthew Dill. I think we need an arena because we don't have a big arena for growing hockey stars. Hockey stars need space to play. We don't want to be cramped together. The bigger the arena, the more people can play. My name is Cora Jernfred, and I can't wait for the arena to be built because kids can rollerblade without having to worry about the police. We could have races with rollerblades too. I think having an arena will be fun. Good evening. Welcome to the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. I'm Rebecca Young. The winner of the Minor Hockey TV Bingo was Violet LaFasse. Congratulations, Violet. The Burgio Academy will have TV Bingo on Wednesday, February 2nd. One game for $300. Cards are available from any student at Burgio Academy and are most stores around town. Please support the Burgio Academy and play TV Bingo. The Faith United Church will be sponsoring a Linton skating gathering for the residents of Burgio on Saturday, February 12th from 6 to 7 p.m. Free hot chocolate will be served. We will have more details later. Burgio Academy will host Jim Payne and Fergus O'Brien variety concert on Friday, February 11th and Thursday, February 17th. The February 11th concert will start at 8 p.m. and will include local traditional musicians as well as O'Brien and Payne. Cost is $5 per person. Reserve seats are available on Monday, January 31st. The February 17th concert will include Kaida 6 students, O'Brien and Payne. Cost is $5 and will run from 7 to 9 p.m. Reserve seats are available on Monday, February 7th. Be sure to buy your ticket to watch these enjoyable events. The Guiding Movement are selling Valentine balloons again this year. This is a great way to show someone how much you care about them, and it's also a great way to surprise them. Balloons cost $1 each and can be ordered from any girl or guider of the Guide Movement. Deadline to order balloons from the girls is Friday, February 4th. The deadline to place telephone orders is Thursday, February 10th. To place secret pail orders, please call Grace at 886-2117. The Burnettes are selling tickets on a basket of towels. Tickets cost $1 each or $3 for $2 and are available from any Burnettes member. Draw date is scheduled for Saturday, February 12th. Upcoming events for the LOA and LOBA. LOBI Valentine Dance, February 12th. LOBI TV Bingo, February 23rd. LOI Wakeathon, February 25th. 
LBI, Easter Party, and Adult Dance, March 26th. We will have more details at a later date. The Burgio Ground Search and Rescue Team will be hosting a snowmobile ride to Grand Brit sometime in late February or early March. Sponsor sheets are available from the following committee members. Jim Domine, Wilf Porter, or Arch Green. We will have more details later. If your group or organization has an upcoming event plan, we will be happy to advertise it for you. Just call the BVS office by Wednesday of each week to have items included in this portion of our broadcast. That concludes the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. See you next week. BBS Playbill. Try our luck on Wednesday by playing Burgio Academy TV Bingo. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.